Our solution in the flask here is uh, pretty gross, pretty tarry, yeah. Look how much it sticks to the walls. So it's a bit thick. It's never what we want to see, really. We, we never want a thick solution. We know there's a lot of acid in there, so uh, our next step is really put it in the set funnel and do washings with sodium hydroxide solution. It's really just neutralizing it. But because we've got so much acid in this <laughs> really uh, thick solution here, I'm just going to be adding some uh, sodium carbonate to this flask here, and we'll stir it around and let it get uh, most of the acid out that way. Oh yeah, there's no reaction. We should be expecting that because um, there's no water in here at all. We've driven all the water out uh, with the Dean Stark. You can see that that solid is down the bottom. You can't really react because um, it needs the water to react. We assume that all the sulfuric acid has migrated into the toluene as para toluene sulfonic acid, you know, PTSA or whatever. It's gone this uh, uh, milky coffee kind of colour. And I think that's because the paratolosulfuric acid, wow, parasulfonic acid, fucking whatever. TSA is, is precipitating out as a TSA hydroxide. Hydrate? Hydrate. Wow, I really need to learn some chemistry. And PTSA hydrate is, is precipitating out. We don't want any of that solid, really. We're going to have to think of some way of removing it. Yeah, okay, that's an interesting thought. Problem basically solved itself because that is phase separated perfectly. So we want that top layer, the the tarry looking one, and the bottom layer with the precipitate is uh, what we don't want because that's the PTSA. So um, we'll use the set funnel uh, and we'll do a couple more washes just with sodium hydroxide solution and then a brine just to try and dry that top layer before we go to the vacuum distillation. I'll crack out my set funnel wherever the fuck that is hiding. Look at that. I added just enough water so that's pretty much exactly fits in my set funnel, you know. I may make blunders constantly, but every once in a while I do something like this. It makes me think I'm a fucking genius at this. Fucking a savant. all that settled out after like an hour of it so uh, uh this is not very good it's not emulsified it's just goddamn thick i put a lot of salt in there to try and drive the water out increase the density of those water droplets so they should sink faster or, or whatever it'll collect and something something polarity something so so i did manage to form a perfect emulsion but i think i've uh, managed to break it it was perfectly emulsified for two days but I think I've broken it with a whole lot more salt and a little bit more uh, toluene. The phase boundary I think is impossible to see in this lighting. I'm gonna have to go out in the direct sunlight, which I'm a little nervous about seeing as I drop that cesium on the lawns. We're doing our best not to drop this on the lawn. There. I cannot see that on the phone screen at all, but maybe I can increase the contrast. Thanks editing Tom for uh, putting that in and that's the line there. So we want this top layer here and we get rid of the bottom layer there. Just one final brine wash. I'm gonna shake this very gently. In fact, I'm not gonna shake, I'm just gonna kind of swirl it together. I hope for the best to get all the water and all the sodium hydroxide out. Just left with a horrible tarry uh, toluene layer. We haven't done a vacuum distillation in uh, years. I don't think ever really with this equipment. I have vague memories of me trying one years ago with like a vacuum cleaner and if I can find the footage, But really, it's it's quite a big unknown. So rather than just jump straight to our precious substrate, what we've got here is some water. So we're just going to be boiling some water. You know, we should be able to tell what our vacuum strength is, right? Because we know water boils at 100 degrees, obviously, at room pressure. But, you know, we don't know what pressure our vacuum pulls. This is our, our shitty vacuum pump. Well, it's not it's not that shitty, but it's I don't mind if it gets ruined uh, over time because it's not, it's not my big precious high vacuum pump. So it's just a, a little eBay 12 volt pump. Um, it's got a brand new power supply. Thank you everyone from that um, video before, whatever video that was, um, that recommended that I need a better power supply because it was stalling because I wasn't getting enough current. So now I've got a, a power supply that gives it more current. So if we plug this in, pulling a vacuum on, on this, I'll work out a way for that to make less of a racket, but yeah, see? 
all these joints are tight. I, I grease them, I very rarely grease my joints, which I can't tell is laziness or efficiency. But now with the vacuum on, um, the, the joints are all, all sealed, I can't get them apart, so we are pulling a vacuum on there. So we'll slowly heat the water and see at what temperature it boils over. I need the thermometer in there, but yeah. So I've got a tiny piddly little stir bar in there which uh, isn't helping, it's bumping <laughs> quite significantly there. But it appears to be working fine and a key bit of information here is that our temperature is 66 degrees. So now using that we can calculate uh, what our pressure is here in this system. Probably get better pressures out if we use a different uh, line here but uh, this might be enough, you know, at least this way. It's not uh, getting water through the pump but... <laughs> Boiling at 65 degrees water means our pressure inside the system is 181 uh, mercuries. Mercuries? What the fuck? 181 millimeters of mercury. The paper uses, I think, what? It's like 23 millimeters of mercury, and the boiling point of the compound is 59 to 60 something degrees. So we can put those numbers into our system and say, well, what would the boiling point be if it's at 181 millimeters of mercury? And we see that it's about 110 degrees, which, you know, is not too high. I mean, it's the temperature it's been subjected to during its uh, Dean Stark reflux anyway. Even though 181 millimeters of mercury is a lot higher than their uh, pressure that they're using, I still think we can get away with it. All right, here we are. We're nearly ready for our vacuum distillation. This is our solution. If you've forgotten what it looks like, um, it looks pretty bad. But uh, we'll, we'll run that through the distillation now. We know there's a little bit of toluene left over, so we need to take some fractions, which is going to be annoying. What's also as annoying is that I broke the bloody connection on uh, the vacuum pump, so I've got to resolder that and um, uh, a few other things. But apart from that, we'll... all right, well, I've repaired that badly, but at least it's repaired. The next thing to repair is uh, this. Why is my stirring not working? Oh, I've got a stir bar in there, and uh, it's not stirring, and I tried a different stir bar, and it's still not stirring. So, um, <sighs> all right, I'll take this apart as well. Yeah, sure, all right, all right, all right. All right, it's still spinning. So why is it not spinning the stir bar? Hmm. All right, so this is a magnet here, and uh, and we can see it it's spinning. You can see it doesn't really spin the spin the stir bar unless the stir bar is really really close to it, basically touching it. So why is the magnet so weak all of a sudden? All right, I've come to the conclusion that the heating manual is fine, and the problem is all my oval stir bars are all absolutely trash magnets. I couldn't even like <laughs> retrieve this stir bar with a magnet. I had to use this grippy retrieval tool you know I had a magnet retrieval tool it didn't even can't even pick it up ah, and that was the case for the other oval stir bars I, I tried as well so um we're using a, <laughs> a better stir bar and now I reckon if we plug this all in and turn the stirring on look it actually stirs all right ah so I don't have any good oval stir bars um but the straight ones kind of work okay ish now, if nothing else decides to uh, play up and be weird, I'm going to set up for the vacuum distillation, finally. We're up and running. Uh, we've got our nice high vacuum grease on all the joints. We've got our tar solution in there. It's heating, it's stirring nicely. Uh, we're pulling somewhat of a vacuum thermometer in there. It's currently nine degrees, which is fucking cold for where I am. It's fucking freezing, I'm dying. When our first fraction comes over, I don't know what temperature there's gonna be because I don't really know what pressure it is in this system uh, exactly. But, you know, the first fraction is just gonna be solvent. So we're just gonna be waiting for that first fraction to come over. Then the temperature should rise somewhat. And then we'll have to take off the vacuum, change over the flask, put it back under vacuum, and then continue heating it for that second fraction, which should be our product. I was really hoping to get this uh, next bit over, but I just can't get it distilling over very well at all. 
Uh, maybe my vacuum pressure is just not high enough. It's really starting to decompose. Got this whole fraction here, which I'm pretty sure is just our solvent. Really nothing is coming over of this. I, I, I don't know whether the fractionating column was a good choice for this then. It's really, really looking very tar-like in that flask. It's uh, getting dark, but I reckon we're done here. Everything's uh, cooled down. Uh, you can see uh, um, it's starting to tar up through the, through the column. Uh, I was distilling off that horrible brown liquid. Uh, I haven't broken any equipment, so, so that's good, but um, freezing my ass off in this fucking experiment. So we get to calculate our yield now, and, and there was a lot of bets of people uh, putting bets on for how much uh, our yield percentage yield was, and, and, and thank you for all the comments. I feel really bad because uh, no one was correct, because I didn't let you guess 0%. This is just our solvent. This is our reaction pot, and it looks exactly how a lot of you suspected it would look. Is what we call tar. <laughs> look at that. That's absolutely fucked. So a lot of you suspected this would happen, and uh, that's because I made a mistake in the synthesis. Um, well, I mean, I was overthinking it a little. I didn't want to produce any dioxane, so I held off the ethylene glycol, and I put the sulfuric acid, the toluene, and the cyclopentanone in the flask and heated it up minimal ethylene glycol to start with. I think I put a third in near the start. The problem with that is that there's another side reaction and that's an aldol condensation. Two different cyclopentone molecules can react under acidic conditions. Those two can then react with a further ketone molecule. So it can keep going and going and going. What you get is this huge condensation reaction and the result is uh, tar. And a classic sign is this red tinge here. That's a classic sort of aldol condensation sign. It's, it's not a yellow, it's a red. So I'm not gonna start hating on red, but it was a, it was a mistake we should have seen coming. And, and I might have got away with it as well if I hadn't used such a huge amount of sulfuric acid. I think I used four to five mil. And honestly, it's about 10 times as much as I should have used. Way overdone. And, and that really contributed to this outdoor condensation side reaction. So the ethylene glycol gets washed out during the washing steps and uh, cyclopentanone ends up as tar. So this project is far from over. We're, we're just going to go back and, and, and redo it all again. I'll have to make new cyclopentanone. I'll have to make new ethylene glycol. Our second attempt should be heaps better. There's so many suggestions from you. All these little subtle things that I should be doing or then maybe think about or maybe can avoid doing that should help stuff out so our next run should be should be very very good and i will be honoring everyone's bets because <laughs> there was a lot of optimistic bets like in the 60 to 70 percent range uh, and our final synthesis when we finally do get some cyclopentanone ether um i will be honoring those bets <laughs>